Hello everyone, so it is the end of the day. I have not vlogged at all today. It's been kind of crazy. So yesterday I had to take the day off, um, which was Tuesday. So yesterday you took the day off and uh, I'm gonna sit you down. Okay, hello everyone. So it is Friday afternoon. Um, I have not vlogged at all today because I it was just one of those crazy days. I got a new student today, so um, busy trying to get things together for him this morning and then just making them show the ropes I had a couple meetings this afternoon during my breaks so um, a lot going on well it is now the end of the day and I was also off yesterday too so like I had to take the day off yesterday to like do boring adult stuff um, so I had to go and take care of some things that I have yet to take care of since I've moved to Pennsylvania. So I needed to go and do that and it would take pretty much all day long, which it did. I think it ended up taking until like two o'clock to get everything finished. So luckily that's all finished and now I don't have to worry about it. But, um, it was just a crazy day today. So catching up on a bunch of things, having a new student, that kind of thing, passing out papers that I needed to pass out, that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, I wanted to do this vlog on my classroom and just talk to you guys about my flexible seating um so i in the beginning of the year i had my flexible seating and it was my you know my couch was in or my chairs were in the middle and i had like two different little meeting areas kids could sit on like these gamer chairs they could sit on yoga balls they could sit on um you know on the floor it was just lots of different choices that kids were allowed to kind of choose from well um, my classroom's changed and it's changed for a couple of different reasons. Um, one, the dynamics of my classes, um, just wasn't working for them. So, uh, whereas I thought that they could handle a little bit of responsibility because they're fourth graders, you know, you think, oh man, they've kind of been through school for four, you know, four years now. They totally understand what is expected of them and what they should be doing. Yeah, that's not, no that doesn't happen all the time. So they're still kids, they're still learning, they're still kind of, you know, testing their limits, that kind of thing, which is, you know, to be expected of kids, that's what they do. So I had to change up my room and bring in some desks. So that's exactly what I did. And I was having some difficulties with the different meeting areas because there are times where I like to sit down in a chair to be able to read a story or that kind of thing and just giving them like two different options of where we needed to sit was causing so much confusion, a bigger headache than what I wanted it to be. So I really wanted to make sure that I had one meeting area versus two meeting areas. So I'm going to show you guys what my room looks like and kind of talk to you about some of the things I'm doing. They do have assigned seats um, only because I'm trying really hard to split some kids up. They just desperately need split up. So um, yes. It's working so far. I am still seeing some of those little behaviors pop up every once in a while. During reading time and that kind of thing, you know, I do give them the opportunity to move around the room and be flexible with that. But if it gets too crazy, I can very easily say, mm, go right back to where you were, you were supposed to be. Where's your seat? You need to sit down. You're taking advantage of, you know, my kindness and the, you know, me allowing you to make your own choices. You're taking advantage of it. So move on. Um, so yes, so let me show you my room. All right, so excuse the fact that my chairs are up, but this is my room and how it looks. Sorry about my chairs being up, but my floor is gonna get cleaned. So let me go to the front. Okay, so here's the front. I still have my pool of corn from my pirate day. I need to get that stuff taken away, but it's 150 pounds, so I'm not really sure yet. All right, so here's what some things that I've done. Um, I moved this carpet, which was kind of in the center of the classroom, to the front. And then I also moved the two yellow chairs to the front. So now I have the option of being able to stand on the stage if I really want to get attention. Or, whew, I'm losing my breath. Or I can take a seat in that yellow chair and have the ability to be able to read to them. I added this um, chart stand up here because it just makes it easier for me to be able to write things on that chart versus me being up here on the board. I like having this so much better. So 
that's what I've done in this little area which I am absolutely loving because now I can simply say please go to the rug up front so they all know that they're gonna come sit up here up front and then you know I have some kids that are sitting around there so if I'm over here like kids are all pretty much like trailing around and they're sitting up there too so it works out really really well okay so now in like this part of the room I have pretty much everything exactly the same kind of um, I have still this table except I think it was like go coming this way but now I've moved it to where it's coming out here and I have the black table on either side so I have my brown one with my I have my brown one with my um benches and then I have my black one that has the other chairs so let me show you that so here's the black one and I did add the two yoga balls here one on either end only because I have the other chair somewhere else plus I didn't like the fact that the chairs if they were there they were throwing off the aesthetics like this one doesn't have anything over here at the end um and this way it kind of allows me to have other kids sit there but it's not so obvious with the chair sticking out I don't know if that makes any sense I'm just being weird it's not aesthetically pleasing to me so there you go um so I have my black table there I have my brown table there right in the middle of it is my round table so I have my round table now in the middle which it used to be over here so now it's in the middle um, and then I have desks that go all the way around it so here it is have my two tables on either side one two round table in the middle and then I have desks that come across I will say that these desks drive me crazy because they are constantly shifting through the day which I'm thinking about getting those um, ties and just tying the legs together so that they're not moving around because these desks shift like crazy like crazy but um, and then the two black chairs that were on the end of this table right here I just put them off over there on the on the end and that's what goes over there now So now I have that's pretty much like my setup for how my kids are sitting and then I brought in another Stand which this one it's this one um, I brought this stand in to help me for when I'm teaching small groups because a lot of the time I'll have kids all the way around here I may even have some on the floor just depending on what exactly the skill that I'm teaching look at my hot mess um, just depending on the skill that I'm actually teaching and what I want how many kids are needing that actual skill so um, it allows me to be able to stand here right on my page chart paper and then have my kids right there watching me so it works out really well it may, just gives me two different meeting areas which I am really really enjoying but overall like I love the setup I love the fact that there's only one meeting area that there's not the two um, but yeah so it's going really really great did I ever tell you guys that I got rid of my um, picture books I did so like now I don't have any of the picture books there they have some tools that they use um, that are over here that can help them for certain things and then we have different activities and things like that that we may be working on that will be in there but that's pretty much it I don't really put a lot of things in there because we only have two hours that's totally not enough time for them to get a ton of like station work done which makes no sense to me so that's what I'm doing there I also did get rid of this is kind of like my what have I changed in my classroom kind of vlog <laughs> okay so I also got rid of my book they're telling me what they were reading like what I am re currently reading or something and they were like little um, pages if I can find a picture I will put that up in there but that's what I've gotten rid of so right now I've gotten rid of that I haven't quite figured out what I want to use this board for um, but it was like they had all of their names were all the way across and they had sticky notes that they would put up there I don't have that anymore because it just wasn't really working for me they weren't using it and I don't want to have something up in my classroom that they're not going to use makes no sense so now what I am doing is my status of the class but now I've heard about this and my status of the class has now like evolved and changed and I can't remember if I told you guys about it so let me show you okay so like here's the status of the class but now everybody has their own page so every day I will I wasn't here yesterday and I, that one is for some reason on another page I don't know why I would put October 31st there but anyway so they have their name up here and then every day I call them during their word study and I quickly just write the book and the page number that they're working on like here 
you can kind of see what this child's been reading and it lets me know exactly where they were and how much they've been reading that kind of thing it lets me know if they're choosing things at home if they're absent if that kind of thing if they're abandoning books but it's a better way for me to be able to keep track of what it is that they're doing during their independent read because I felt like I was really struggling with the fact that you know sometimes I kind of knew what they were reading and I was like well didn't you have another book a different day and um, they really and they don't really communicate some of that with you you know they just all of a sudden abandon a book and then the next thing you know it they have another book in their hands so I really want to make sure that I was keeping track as far as what they were doing during their independent time and I feel like this really helps me know what it is that they're reading and where they are as a reader and it also brings up some really great conversations during those individual conferences too so yes I'm winded Today we did Wishing Well Wednesday for my morning message, which actually ended up pretty cute and I really loved it. I love that one kid said, I wish I could learn how to round up to the millions. I really want to show my partner teacher that, which I think I'm gonna go get her and show her that. So let me show you this real fast. So they had Wishing Well Wednesday. What is something you wish you could learn about and then why so we have like all of their little answers up here which are phenomenal and then I have my morning message so that's pretty much what I have going on all my flags came back do you see that do you guys notice that so my flags are back up um they got up I think on Friday so that was really good or was it Friday? No, it got, they got up on Monday. So they're up now. Very excited about that. I need to clean off some of my stuff at my table and get my life together because I was out yesterday. So I'm going to go do that. <sighs> Hopefully I've had something to drink and then I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay, so it's pretty late. I actually had my mother-in-law go and pick up my son today so that I could stay just a little bit later. I had a meeting right after school, so that kind of put me behind. But I had to get rid of some papers, get some things together for a meeting that I have tomorrow morning, and um, you know, just like the everyday kind of stuff. So I did my board. My board is very simple. I'm not even gonna show it to you because it's a hot mess. Um, well, it's not messy, but it's just not really anything to love. It's tomorrow's Thoughtful Thursday, so what is one thing that you love the most about your class? Meaning both classes, which I actually did put that on there, so. Um, then I cleaned up some of my desk area, filed some of my paperwork, and then, see, so now all this looks very lovely, which I'm very excited about. Um, got together my writing assessment that I'm going to give tomorrow, so all of that's cleared off. Can I just say that I am in love with this book right now? If you guys have not checked it out... You have to check it out. It is so good. It's called A Tale Dark and Grim, and it's about taking fairy tales um, and teaching kids about the like the dark side of it, I guess. I don't know how to explain that. That was probably like the worst way of explaining that that I could have done. But anyways, so this book, phenomenal. Um, I'm going to read the back to you. So it says, once upon a time, fairy tales were awesome. Um, follow Hansel and Gretel as they run away from their own story and into eight other scary fairy tales. Their encounter, they'll encounter witches and warlocks, hunters and with deadly aim, and bakers with ovens that are just right for baking children. Um, it may be frightening, but unlike those other fairy tales, you know, these are true. So it's super neat because it's told from two different point of views. Because there's one where I kind of picture like a kid in my head who is telling you about, well, it's not a kid because I think in there he like actually says he's not a kid because he said he believed it a long time ago. But um, he goes on to say, talks about these fairy tales and about how there are other fairy tales out there that are real and that, you know, the ones that we know are so boring, but the other ones that are, that are out there, they're violent and they're bloody and they're scary. And I mean, it's not as bad as what you think. This was in the children's section. Okay, let me mind you. Like, this is a children's book. So it's a children's book. It's not awful, awful. Um, but it goes on to like give some of the um, 
like almost grim version of fairy tales but as they're going through this whole fairy tale and they're like telling it every once in a while they'll stop and this like person will come back in and say whoa 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 wait a minute can I just say something here and like starts to add kind of their two cents into what is happening in the actual fairy tale so it's really really neat I'm loving it I'm doing this as a whole class with two of my classes so there's two different colored sticky notes based upon which classes where and what I think I'm gonna do is have some like different questions we're gonna talk about characters because that's where I'm really focusing for the next couple of months is on fairy tales and we're really gonna dig deep into fairy tales talking about characters talking about the elements of a fairy tale and we're kind of taking it on you know third fourth fifth and sixth grade levels so what I'm doing right now with fairy tales my sixth grade and my fifth grade teachers are doing it but they're doing it a little bit different into a deeper they're digging deeper with you know common core that type of thing so it works really really great um, right now what we did today with fairy tales is we just kind of really quick set up a book and book creator so it's an app that's really neat so they set up a um a book and book creator and they created their cover and then i told them that we have to talk about our schema because we always start with you know what is it that we actually know about fairy tales and it was really surprising what some kids knew and what some kids don't so i'm actually really happy that i'm doing this unit because you'd be surprised that a lot of kids don't know their fairy tales which is hmm. anyways so um, they created a, a, the first page that said schema and so then they started kind of typing in and putting things that they know about fairy tales writing titles that they know about writing the things like you know they're magical their fiction it's traditional literature as far as genre all of that kind of stuff was put onto this page tomorrow we're gonna start discussing actual elements of a fairy tale we're gonna take one and we're gonna start dissecting it and looking a little bit deeper at those different elements so I'm excited about that but all of this is going to go into book creator so the idea is is that they're going to do in fourth grade then they're going to take their book over into fifth grade and in book creator in fifth grade they're going to continue adding into their learning digging a little bit deeper when they go into sixth grade they're going to have that same book in book creator and they're going to dig it a little bit deeper and look at it at a different perspective so it's really really awesome I love it phenomenal book if you have not read it definitely read it I love all things scary and weird and crazy and creepy so this was right up my alley so very very excited I'm starting to sweat because I turned the air conditioner off at five o'clock it's six o'clock so that's getting a little hot I am gonna take some of those binders home that I need to work on for my meeting tomorrow morning make sure everything's kind of tip-top shape there and I'm gonna get ready to go so oh yeah I'll talk to you guys later bye hopefully you enjoyed this really short slash random Lost satellite reception. <laughs> um very short and a little bit random vlog if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up share it out subscribe i love you all hope you're having a great week and i will talk to you guys really really soon bye